Hi and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry webcast. Today we're talking about free energy and how it relates to redox reactions. I have to give a special shout out to Felicia, Rebecca, and Elizabeth who helped me put this whole presentation together. They're here to help me record. You're going to hear them chime in occasionally. So let's talk about what we want to accomplish in this webcast. The first thing I want to do is introduce an alternate form for the Gibbs free energy equation that really relates to redox reactions. And we can use this to determine whether a reaction is spontaneous or not based on the sign of E cell. We're going to relate E naught to the equilibrium constant, and we're going to do a practice problem. So we'll have a whole set of skills here that are really important for AP Chem students because these questions show up a lot in different contexts. So let's start by introducing the equation we really need. This is a really important equation. It'll be on your formula sheets. And this version of the Gibbs free energy equation says delta G equals negative NFE. Let's talk about the parts of this. F is the Faraday's constant. You may have seen this before in electrodeposition problems. And Faraday's constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. That's the form of it in terms of the units that we'll generally use. N is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction, so you do need to know what redox reaction you're working with here so that you know how many electrons are transferred. E naught is the, the standard cell potential. If it's got that little naught symbol, we're saying we're finding it at standard conditions, which are 25 degrees Celsius and one molar solutions. If E naught or E cell comes out to be a positive number, we're saying that the reaction is spontaneous. Delta G will come out to be negative. So you can know that relationship conceptually and make that prediction without actually doing the math out. And you do need to be able to do that. If you have, say, an electrolytic cell, and E cell is negative, that's saying that delta G will be positive and it will be a non-spontaneous process. So thermodynamically favorable is another way to say spontaneous. That's right, and the College Board has started using this terminology of thermodynamically favorable or not thermodynamically favorable instead of saying spontaneous or not spontaneous. You need to be familiar with both sets of terms because your textbook may use one and the Test will say something else, and you don't want to be confused just because it's a new terminology. So we can also relate E cell to the equilibrium constant. Since delta G equals negative RT ln of K, and hopefully you've seen that relationship before, but it's also really helpful, we can rearrange it to solve for K using our old friend, the exponential function. At 25 degrees Celsius, we can simplify this a little bit and say that the log of K is n times e naught over 0.0592, because all of the terms simplify when we take r and t and all that. So it, this can be a really useful relationship, too, and this is something that's going to show up for problems that you want to be able to do. So let's do a problem. A voltaic cell is constructed from a lead lead 2 half cell and from a magnesium magnesium ion half cell. We want to write the balanced equation, calculate each cell, and from that we can get delta G and the equilibrium constant. So this is a really comprehensive problem that we can take really pretty far. So for our half reactions, you need to have your standard reduction potential sheet. I don't have it shown here on the screen, but this is something you would have access to or be given the half reactions. And of course, they have different standard reduction potentials. So when you're doing these kinds of problems, you have to remember that we keep the one that's got the higher standard reduction potential as the reduction half reaction and the one with the the lower standard reduction potential is going to do what? It's going to flip. All right, so you keep the one that's got the higher E naught, you flip the one that's got the lower E naught because it's got a greater potential to oxidize. And so we'll flip the reactions and then we can just add them up. And that's how we can find E cell. Do remember when you're um, finding E cell, you never multiply the E not values, the standard reduction potential values by any coefficients. That's not an issue in this particular problem, but it is a common mistake. So we can add up our half reactions. Oop, they got a little bit cut off, but that's okay. So lead 2 plus magnesium makes lead metal plus magnesium ion, and the voltage is 2.24 volts. Okay, so what we can see here is that there are two electrons being transferred, and E cell is positive 2.24 volts. So we can now find delta G. We know N. We know E naught and the Faraday is a constant. So we can put all of this together and really it's just substitute and evaluate. So we'll do that. So we just plug it all in. All right. We get it really a very large negative number. 
right? So delta G is negative. That's what we expected because E cell was positive. And we should probably pay attention to sig figs at least a little bit. Obviously, this is way too many. So um, we'll record it in joules. Um, make sure that when you report your answer that your units are consistent. So you could do it in joules. You could leave it in kilojoules. You convert it to kilojoules. That's fine. But make sure your units and your value kind of go together. All right? That's important. Sound good? All right. So... The last thing we need to do is find the equilibrium constant. Now, we know delta G, we know K, so we can put those together. Um, this form of the equation rearranged is really the version that we want here. All right. Um, things we have to remember. Um, we have to use the R in joules per mole per K. Right. So you have to really be careful here that your units all make sense. There are several different versions of R if you look on your reference sheet, and you want to make sure you've got the one with joules. or delta G's in joules? And otherwise, it won't all make sense. One other thing we have to keep in mind, folks, what else do we have to remember? Delta G. That's right. So we had, on the previous slide, had delta G in both joules and kilojoules. We had converted it. But our R is in joules per mole per Kelvin. We want our delta G in joules. And our temperature also needs to be in the correct scale. We have to make sure our temperature is in the Kelvin scale. But once you've got this information, again, it's a substitute and evaluate situation. So we can plug that in. All right. Do pay close attention to like order of operations and how you enter this into your calculator because that can be a huge problem. We get a very, very, very large value for K. Does that seem reasonable, folks? Yeah, right? Because E cell is positive, delta G is negative, and we have a very negative delta G that correlates to a it favoring products. You're going to have a large KEQ value. So that's really very typical. All right, so when delta G is negative, KEQ will be very large, right, which means the reaction would be spontaneous or thermodynamically favorable. The other thing I wanted to point out is if delta G, you work it out from your problem, if you do it and delta G comes out to be positive, what do you know about K? What should be true about K? It should, should be very small because you're not making a lot of products. It's not favorable to proceed in the forward direction, and you're going to have mostly reactants. So I think we accomplished quite a bit. We're in good shape. All right, we'll meet up another time.